that's the chart that's everyone it. should focus on. Nobody's focusing on this because they're like, oh, gold went up $100, it, oh, Bitcoin's going to jump. But this is telling us something big. Where does it want to go, Yankee? It wants to go back to 48 or 50 because all this is white space. There's nothing there. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I get questioned all the time. Yankee, when should I buy silver and gold? Should I buy it now? Should I sell it now? What's the right timing? Now, a lot of people just dollar cost average, and that's fine. Every week, every month, they just buy a little bit. But I believe that with some proper training, you can pick the optimal time, more often than not, to buy your silver and gold in tranches. And to do that, I highly recommend you watch this video all the way through because Mukarram Majud, the Chief Information Officer of Blackstone Commodity Group, someone who I've been uh, connected with for about a year now, really knows his stuff. He is an expert trader and I have learned so much from listening to him and I think you can too. So definitely watch this video, hit the like before you do though right now because that will help the YouTube algorithm and get this information out to as many people as possible on YouTube. I just bought another tube of silver a while as well yesterday and just another uh, tube of maples and, and my stacking silver is, is slowed down some as compared to gold but I still stack both and I really want to know what you see coming over the next few weeks and, and uh, months. I have, a, I have a treat when it comes to the charts today. This is Ooh. a great insight and I, I'm gonna show you that. Oh. But gold is telling me, the charts are, uh, you know, it's telling me, okay, it wants to, it, it's gone up quite a bit. It may take a little bit of an easing off, like a monster wanting to breathe, right? <laughs> After that, I think it wants to take out its high from last year. That's what it wants to do. Oh. And we'll look at the charts Good. to kind of pick it up. <laughs> um, and I'm silver open. looks great, it's coiling up but it yeah. needs to come down a little before it gets ready and breaks 30. And here's what's great about silver. Just mm -hmm. like, you know, last time when silver uh, struggled between 16 and 19 for a while, closed over 20, it went to 29 in, in about a week. That's what you're gonna see when it closes over 30. It'll go from 30 to 40 that quick. It's gonna happen fast, huh? When it closes on a Friday afternoon, especially if it's on a Friday afternoon at the end of the week, mm -hmm. if it closes and stays over $30 an ounce on the spot, mm -hmm. it'll go to 40 very, very quickly. When we did our last show, this is kind of what we were talking about, this double bottom for gold. You know how gold had come down yes. quite a bit, right? Yes. And then it came down, then went back up and then came down. This is the classic, a what we double call bottom. it, formation or, or, or the process of forming a, a, a double bottom. So as the mark was coming down, we had the first bottom right here. Yep. Okay. Now, how we knew kind of that, that we might see a bounce, I mean, we're not convinced we might see a bounce is because this is what we call a positive engulfing candle, but we're still not convinced, right? So it goes up and then guess what? It comes back down and you can see it stopped around the same area. Okay. Yep. And then you had the similar candle, which is what we call a positive engulfing candle. That's how we knew that's a double bottom formation. Okay. And what does that mean? That means in the near term, we're going to see a reversal for gold and we'll see gold starting to go higher. It'll also tell us a lot of things. Like if you have your antennas up, it'll tell us a lot of things that could happen in the, in the stock market. It could happen in Bitcoin. And then guess what? Gold started going higher. Yep. And the first confirmation of a double bottom is when you break this pivot. This is what's called the pivot point. Okay. So if you broke it like here, It'll come back and then you see this big uptrend we have. Yes. So pretty much from 1680, we've gone to almost 1900. That's a big move Huge. just off of understanding how a double bottom looks on a chart. Gold showed us in 2020 that it's in a long-term uptrend. And then we have a government and a system that wants to continue to spend money and create money out of thin air, which will support gold because that's real money. Uh, and that's why we were not worried, especially, especially because we knew that after it went from 1200 to 2000 plus, yep. it needs to take a breather. And that's what it was doing. Mm -hmm. It came back down from 2000 to the, you know, the high 1600s to 1700. Mm -hmm. And now it's telling us that this is the next leg up. So this is why, and I'll show you, there's a very telling chart. But quickly for people to understand this, the stochastics got very oversold right here, yep. oversold. And you can see how that 
led to a massive move. You know, you know how a lot of people say, uh, well, when you're doing physical gold, I don't think of it as a trade. I don't think of it as something that I need to learn the technicals. But guess what? The technicals really help you accumulate the physical gold at better times. Even if you're paying a little bit more of a premium, you understand, hey, it's okay if I pay that premium because the market's now on an uptrend again. And I think that's a, that's a sophisticated way of buying physical precious metals. Mm. And also it's a more rewarding way because it, you'll, you'll get it at better price levels. Not just, I'm talking about the dollar cost, I'm just saying you'll get it at better levels in, yeah. on the charts when the market begins an uptrend and you'll feel like you, you made a good decision. Right. You know? Right. Why hasn't silver confirmed gold and gold's rise? First, when you look at silver and gold, okay, always, always gold is the leader in the complex. Mm. Even after running up big and silver having that big 50% move up in 2020, right? After the correction, you'll see that Silver is al always lags gold until silver breaks through certain resistance zones and then it outperforms gold with that gold and silver ratio kind of shrinking. Okay, so I'm not at all worried about silver lagging. I'll just say silver is acting exactly the way it's supposed to act mm -hmm. because the moment it gets enough momentum behind it and closes over $30 an ounce, mm -hmm. that's where it'll go. So Quickly, we're looking at a daily chart on gold, right? So as a, like a forensic scientist, what you do is when, when things start to come together, you go, well, some things don't make sense. Why did Bitcoin drop so much? Hmm. You know, we know all the real reasons. Because but... Bitcoin sucks. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> but then here's what's interesting. So what, what I did was I said, okay, so just for your viewers, yep. I, I want you to remember this, these things. So first you see the RSI is overbought, stochastics is overbought. But I said to myself, okay, I, I think on the, uh, we, we may have a correction a couple of days or a week in gold. So what I did was I started looking at the weekly chart. Now on the weekly chart also, gold looks overbought, right? Mm -hmm. So here's what's interesting. So mm -hmm. when I saw that, I'm like, huh. Does that mean it can have a more of a correction? Yes, you know, like into the, into the support zone right here or so. That's why that 1850 number, right. okay? Because this is overbought, right? Right. right. Uh, and RSI is not yet not overbought, yep. it's almost there. And then we're, we're right at the resistance zone. Now, if you look at the weekly, you can now see it goes back further in time, right? And you can see this was the high that was created in, you know, July, September of last year. But Yankee, I want you to pay very, very close attention and the viewers to the stochastics because I am going to change this into a monthly chart. Now understand that a monthly chart is the most data centric chart Whoa. that you will look at because it's the longest term chart that you'll be looking at, right? Whoa, what a difference. Look how beautiful the stochastics is coming together, completely oversold after about three or four months of dropping, right? Completely oversold, about to cross and gold about to break out and the last time the stochastics was here was in in twenty in just before twenty nineteen when gold went from twelve hundred to two thousand. That's the chart That's everyone it. should focus on. Nobody's focusing on this because they're like, oh, gold went up a hundred dollars. Oh, Bitcoin's going to jump. Yeah. But yeah. this is telling us something big's coming. This is great. Okay, so gold. Okay. Now we can go to silver. The audience do. got this. You know, I wanted the audience to understand this. Man. But this is how we help all of our clients prepare for something, you know, because you may not see it and, and the people you talk to may not see it, but this is what we do for our clients. So I'm going to go to silver. And the first thing that I'm going to show yep. you here on silver is the daily. So silver, you can see how it's gone up since that bottom, sure. you know, it's gone up nice and steady. Yep. And like you're saying, it's a little frustrating. It hasn't broken out. Right. And then it tends to have consolidative days like this. Okay. Uh, to me first, this looks like an interesting, what we call a bull flag forming, right? Um, and what that means is that when it breaks through this resistance area, it wants to fly. But here's the interesting thing. Let's go back to last time, right? Remember how silver went up so much so quickly? This is a daily chart, okay? Silver had this big moves, two, three dollars in a day, three, four dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. Big move. Went over 30, but couldn't close at the end of the day. And the next day had a big red candle down. You see that? Big drop, yes. quick drop. This time around, the, the ascent to 30 is very organized, okay? And that's what I like about it. And it's easing off as it's coming there, 
that's better to see instead of a big red candle all the way down. <laughs> yeah. I would rather have a few days of consolidation, come down, come mm. down, maybe even come down a little bit, then get ready, build what I call an energy base. This is what's called an energy base, right? right. Like here, you see, like, built yep. an energy base and then went up $5. Right. Yeah. Um, so this time, if we build an energy base and have a couple candles that close over 30, that's when you'll have the run from 30 to 40. So you have to get ready for that, um, exactly. especially if you're looking at a weekly chart in silver. Whole numbers have always been resistance, you know, <laughs> like major whole numbers, 20, yeah. 30. All of that has been resistance. Right. 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 But for me, the same thing on the monthly, the monthly is curling, you know, up down here in the stochastics. It's getting ready, but just like silver, always it 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 will lag gold, but it'll outperform gold percentage-wise when it breaks through those even handled uh, resistance levels. Mm -hmm. Any predictions by the end of the summer? Here's what I'm thinking. First, I think the stock market will try to go a little higher and higher going into the FOMC meeting. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, this is also something that I'm trying to you know help my clients understand. Mm. You should begin to protect your money from the stock market i'm not saying get out of everything do all this what i'm saying is try to have a portion of it you know uh if you don't like you know some people don't like gold and silver right <laughs> but if you do like gold and silver and you understand the value and the power of gold and silver you have to move money out of the stock market into gold and silver especially when you see like this is the monthly chart on silver so this is a beautiful like if you look at this this is the top end of a flag and you can see this is the pole of the flag yeah that this is what we call a classic bull flag and what happens is when you break the the tops of this tapering flag right there yeah where does it want to go yankee it wants to go back to 48 or 50 because all this is white space there's nothing there you see that there's nothing there yeah. so this is a beautiful bull flag that's been that's setting up all of 2020, it created the pole, and right now it's the flag. And the moment it breaks it, watch out. Do you think percentage-wise silver is going to make a higher front than gold? Yeah, I think so. When gold starts going up significantly, I think gold has a, a realistic chance of breaking its high from 2020. When that happens, more and more people can't afford to buy gold, right? So they turn towards silver. This is one of the reasons why silver outperforms gold in any bull run, especially in the middle to late bull, bull run, yeah. because more people can buy silver. And when more people buy silver, the price of silver outperforms the price of gold percentage wise. That's what's going to happen. Here's, here's what I always say to people who's, who think that certain markets are, are very manipulated, which is true. <laughs> certain mm -hmm. markets are manipulated. This is why I have this rule that if a market based on good mathematics and this is what you learn from us like when you take our trading classes mm -hmm. or you take the trading classes with me or you work with me in, in the investment accounts you have first i don't care about the first 10 percent of a market yankee i do not care about the first 10 percent of a movement in a market okay so let me give you an example mm -hmm. um if this is the first movement i don't care about this first 10 percent okay because I want someone else to take that risk and I want someone else to mess around trying to show off their ego <laughs> and to try to be whoever they want to be, right? Yeah. Because yep. I've learned from the markets, you have to be humble. You don't want to be someone who, say, who thinks you're going to be right all the time. So I don't care about the first 10%. And then when this market goes up significantly, I do not care about the last 20%. Like the first 10 and the last 20. Now, some people tell me, in, in 2008, this happened to me, right? Sorry, in 2011, we had clients in, in, in late October 2008 and in January 2009 when we were placing large positions in gold and silver. Gold and silver went up significantly. In 2011, when we saw some major volatile, volatility signals, I remember clearly when I came into my office and silver was up $6 and down $4 in a day, I was like, that's it. It's time to get out, right? Um, what I mean by that is some plants, no, let's hold on. Let's, I, I think, it, and yes, they will be right. It'll go up some more, mm -hmm. but I don't care about the last 20% because if you do the math right, all I care about is catching the middle 70% of a market movement. If you can do that a few times a year or a few, mark, few markets in a few, like in a five year time period, you will have a significant multiple return on your money, not five, 10%, right? right? So that's why I follow that. So even if a market's manipulated, even if it's traded in the most weird way, if you catch 70% of, of the middle of a market, you get out.
I, I just want people to understand that there's a lot of fundamental issues that are coming up and there's a lot of pre-existing fissures that mm. people may not understand, but it can become big tremors and then end up being a big earthquake. And here's the thing. If the stock market correction that happened in March of 2020, that's a one-off event that happened due to COVID. I think what people need to understand is whatever correction that's coming is due to a, 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 a lot of fundamental, real fundamental issues. And that could end up being a perfect storm. It's going to dwarf. Yes. Yeah, it's going to dwarf what we saw. All right, Makaram, thanks again. Appreciate right, you, buddy. Take care, Yankee. Take and care. everyone, I enjoy talking to you guys. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me, okay? It was great seeing you guys. Take care. Makaram Majud is an amazing guy. Such a wealth of knowledge. Very easy to talk to. I've chatted with him many times on the phone, and several of my uh, members and subscribers have too, and they've always told me that he is uh, very clear in the way he describes these complex um, trading methodologies. He takes his time with his clients. So I highly recommend you reach out to him. The contact information is in the description of this video. Email me too if you want me to introduce you to Mukarm. That's fine, yankeestacking at gmail.com. But I guarantee you will not be disappointed in the advice and information that Mukarm provides. Well, that's about it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe if you actually haven't. Hit the bell too. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.